Welcome to my second neurology video and in this video I'm going to briefly introduce the different ways, the different structures that protect the brain and we're only going to talk about this for five minutes but as you can see the diagram shows the skin, the periosteum, the cranium, the dura mater, the arachnoid matter and the pia mater and in this video we're actually not going to be talking about the skin, the periosteum and the cranium. Uh, we're going to address those in later videos in this video we're mainly going to focus on the three structures that can be classified as the meninges uh, which as I said are the dura mater, the arachnoid matter and the pia mater and actually we're going to talk about the subarachnoid matter as well which is a little space that's uh, just beneath the arachnoid matter and so we're going to start with the dura mater uh, this is actually a structure that is just beneath the cranium and it's actually very tough uh, and this is why it, it was called the dura mater because the word dur actually means tough in French and again a lot of these words have Latin and, and Greek uh, uh, prefixes and, 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 and roots and so it's important to understand what the name means in order to understand the structure so the dura mater is a, a, a layer of tough tissue that sits just beneath the cranium in order to act as a protection uh, for the brain in order to protect against concussions and different contacts that falls that someone might have. This structure is very good in helping support uh, the brain in that way along with the cranium. The second structure that makes up the meninges is called the arachnoid matter and this uh, structure is much softer than the dura mater. Again as you move up from uh, different structures to downwards you should see that uh, as you get closer to the brain that some of these structures should get softer and the arachnoid matter is actually uh, spider web like it's got these little openings on it and it's much more like a sponge almost but a little softer uh, it's it's not nearly as hard as the dura matter is and it helps to kind of cushion uh, the brain as you get closer to the brain it's one of those layers that actually helps to cushion the brain and then just beneath the arachnoid matter within that little space beneath there you have what you call the subarachnoid matter and that's actually where cerebrospinal fluid is uh, contained there and uh, this is actually also a network of blood vessels that uh, help to support uh, the brain by supplying oxygenated blood and uh, things like that but however you do have some cerebrospinal fluid that is present in the subarachnoid matter and uh, and it's very important because this fluid really helps to uh, add a cushion and it really helps to soften uh, the structure in order to make sure that the brain isn't exposed to hard contact with the outer layers of different uh, structures as you can see that are above the brain such as the cranium and the dura mater and as you move down you, you all have the pia matter which is a really thin uh, layer of tissue that actually makes contact with the brain the pia matter is also the site of where there's a lot of uh, little uh, uh, blood vessels such as capillaries that actually also help blood to be supplied to the brain however the majority of the, uh, the blood vessels are found in the subarachnoid matter um, but the pia matter does uh, serve as a little diffusion uh, layer of tissue where diffusion occurs and blood actually enters and leaves uh, the brain. So these three structures, you can say these four structures if you want to consider the subarachnoid matter as a fourth meninge, uh, you can say that these are the meninges and uh, when people talk about the different ways in which the brain is protected uh, they tend to refer to the meninges it's not just the cranium it's not just uh, the periosteum it's actually also these structures that are actually hidden uh, much deeper within the, 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 the skull the second thing I'm going to talk about in this video is the blood-brain barrier and how this structure the blood-brain barrier is much different from the meninges that I've talked about already remember that the meninges are this these layers of tissues that kind of uh, form this little pocket around the brain and kind of uh, pad it in in order to make sure that uh, the brain is safe from hard contact and in order to make sure that there's adequate blood supply uh, distributed to the brain and when we talk about oxygen rich blood the blood-brain barrier is actually different in that it makes sure that toxic chemicals don't 
uh, diffuse through uh, into the brain and again this happens because the blood-brain barrier refers to these networks of capillaries that are present in the brain that helps to ensure that uh, toxic chemicals do not diffuse through and the ability of a chemical to diffuse through the blood-brain barrier has to do with its its lipid solubility for instance because remember on the on the walls of the arteries you have some cholesterol you have different structures that can actually uh, play a role in preventing certain toxic chemicals from diffusing through but another thing that plays a role when it comes to the blood-brain barrier is uh, that it has these little pores on, on the on the bottoms and actually in around the the arteries you have these small openings that are very small that only certain chemicals can actually diffuse through that being if they are micromolecules and so it's not just about the, the the lipid solubility it's not just about whether or not chemicals can diffuse through fat layers of tissue uh, through passive diffusion it's not just about that it also has to do with various chemical properties of, of various uh, of toxins and also has to do with uh, their ability to uh, diffuse through based on size once again, uh, these videos are only uh, introduction videos to uh, biopsych concepts. Uh, I'm, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I hope you subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video where we're going to be talking about neurons and uh, how they impact the brain.